All right, so welcome back, and we're still just working on understanding the very essentials of, uh, of the physical background of electrocardiogram. Electroencephalography is going to be covered in the next video, and we're just going to really quick do a quick revision as to the direction of the action potential like we did in the last video. We're going to be introduced to the idea of an integral vector, which is something that I slightly mentioned. And we're also going to understand what is the Eindhoven triangle. And then we're going to put it all together and understand the electrocardiogram. And it's really important to understand. I'm going to, to uh, stick to the basics. And if you're studying electrocardiogram for a second year uh, med school or for your physiology class, this is not the video for you. Maybe, maybe there will be one later. But right now, we're just going to stick to the essentials for the purpose of biophysics. OK, so just a quick revision. We have our sinus node. And it's going to fire in all directions. It's going to fire in all directions. And we're going to have the propagation of action potential in all directions. And then only be being that we have this fibrous tissue here that blocks the action potential from, uh, from going from the atria to the ventricles, it is only going to be able to propagate through the AV node, which is a slow conductive tissue. And we're not really going to be able to read this on our instrumentation because it's such a small small tissue compared to the atria or the ventricles even. And now we're going to have a very quick depolarization of the left and right bundle branches of the bundle of His. And what we know from this is that this, this septal tissue here is going to be depolarized from the left bundle of His. So we're just going to see, we're just going to see these little guys, these little vectors. And then we're going to have a very, very big major event of the depolarization of the ventricle itself. And also the the septal tissue is, is the, is the ventric ventricular septal tissue. So this is also the depolarization of the ventricles. But when I'm talking about this event, it's just a, a more major event. And then we have, after, after this major event, we have a smaller event of the, of the uh, depolarization of the outskirts, you can say, or the, or the edges of the ventricles. Obviously, I'm just keeping to very, very, very basic terms. And then we have the repolarizing wave change color, the repolarizing wave going in this direction, going in this direction. Very good. And if we understand that, all we really want to be able to do is being that in physics, I can take one vector and I think another vector, and I can add them up and get uh, a vector in between. I can add vectors up, which is really, really nice. What I can do that, and I, I can also do that here. I can also add the vectors up here. And this is basically referred to as the integral vector with respect to electrocardiogram, because the integral vector is the vector that we'll be using in the Eindhoven triangle explanation follows. So before we understand all this Eindhoven triangle, let's see if we can add, add the vectors up and get an integral vector. Well, basically, it's really easy to do this here. The integral vector in, in this instance, and I'm going to switch colors again because I don't like the contrast. There we go. No, let's do, there we go. So this is the general direction that I can expect. And if I also address the magnitude, I'm going to get something along this, something along this, this size, this size. And this is the, the first, I'm just going to put it here, the first electrical event. And now we have the AV node. I don't really read much of anything. I don't really get anything. Not much. And then and the third electrical event, and the third electrical event, and the fourth and the fifth are all going to be for the ventricles. So the first uh, um, electrical event of the ventricles is the depolarization of the, of the septal tissue here, which is just going to read uh, something along these lines, or rather something along these lines. And again, a very small magnitude compared to the first one, because it's a very small tissue. So a very small magnitude here. Very good. And then we have the really big, big event of these yellow arrows here. And we're going to read the biggest vector of all here. It's going to look something along these lines. These lines. Very nice. And then after that, we have this event of the edges of the heart being depolarized. And we're going to read something along these lines if we add, if we add those up. And then what we're going to have, and then what we're going to have, at that point is the depolarizing wave is going to be like so, and it's going to direct us in that direction, in that direction. Very good. It's going to be in that direction. And this is going to be discussed later in the EKG curve. And why is this slightly different? But as you, as you, can, as you can imagine, all of these, all of these are repolarizing wave, repolarizing wave, and this is a depolarizing wave. So this should clue you in as to maybe this would be read different on the curve itself. 
So these are the integral vectors that we can, it's basically the vectors that we add up, and these give us the direction of each event, each electrical event that we're going to read. Very nice, and we're just going to keep on going, keeping it simple, keeping it good. So basically the Eindhoven triangle says, says something very, very simple. If I can take, if I can take three dots, and they're not really dots, but if I can take all of these three, uh, three points, and I can electrically add them up, meaning that I can, I can, I can put a, let's just say, a, a wire through them, and I can measure the respective currents and potential changes between them. Basically, what I'm going to say is something very simple. If I read charge moving from this direction to this direction, if I read charge, let's say we have little electrons and they're moving in this direction, I'm going to have a positive reading. It's just some sort of set standard that we have. So this side is going to be the positive reading, and if I'm going this side, it's going to be the negative reading. Well, what happens if I'm going down? What happens if I'm going down this side? Well, if I'm going down this side, I'm going to see a positive reading here, and a negative, negative reading if I'm going that side. So if I have a charge going in this side, a charge going in this side, I'm going to see a positive, a positive, um, a positive shift, and if electrons are going in that direction, I'm going to have a negative reading. I'm not really going to deal with this lead, because for the most part, these two are going to be enough for us, and I'm going to explain why a little bit later. So let's just say, let's just say I have, uh, and again, this is, this is lead one, this is lead two, and this is just their names, their respective names uh, in electrocardiography. And if I have on lead one, I have a plus I have a plus 30. What does that mean? It means that electrons are going in that direction. Very good. And what if I have on lead 2 minus 30? It means that electrons are moving in that direction. Very good. And what we can also understand is that in de instead of giving the different values in current, what we can do is we can just build vectors from them. And what I mean by that is just, let's, let's just say 30 is this length. I can just draw, I can just draw an arrow here, a vector here, and let's just say lead two reads reads plus plus eighty for some reason. It reads plus eighty, and I'm going to give it a very bigger magnitude, and I'm going to draw this here. And this is how we can we can use a triangle to represent the current measurements between two points. And as you can imagine, we already discussed adding up vectors. We can add up vectors in physics. How nice of it. And what we can really do is we can take this arrow and this arrow and we can add them up. We can add them up and we'll get something along these lines maybe. And this is what I mean, this is what I mean by integral vector. Integral vector. Very nice. So Eindhoven's triangle is basically a representation of three different points uh, and then we're measuring the uh, the current going from one point to the other. And in that respect we can we can draw vectors. We can draw vectors, which is going to be easier for us to understand to understand uh, what direction uh, it is it is going. And basically, and by it I mean the electrical conductivity, obviously. And basically, if you have this one one lead and this second lead, and I'm telling you my Eindhoven triangle read plus twenty and negative sixty, then you can just imagine that I I can build this triangle here. Just going to switch colors here, why not? I can build this triangle here, and then you can actually tell me plus 20 is going to be something along the lines, something along the lines of this. And mainly minus 60 is going to be something along the lines of this. And I'm going to ask you, what is the integral vector in this instance? And you can just add them up and get maybe something along these lines. Maybe something along these lines. And again, this is, this is a vector that you're probably not going to be... <laughs> Any, if any, any, any situation in which you're going to be asked to draw these two situations, as long as you understand that this is going to be slightly deflected to the left and is also going to be slightly less in magnitude, and you're going to draw maybe something like this, it is going to be acceptable. It is going to be acceptable. And you can imagine that I can take this Eindhoven's triangle and somehow smack it on a dude. <laughs> I can take this dude here, and if somehow I find a way to put this triangle on this person, in the middle I maybe would be able to draw the, uh, the direction of the propagation of the electroconductivity of the heart. And it just so happens that we're able to do that. And here we have a dude, and obviously I'm not winning any trophies for, uh, for, drawing, for drawing, but here we have a dude that uh, he has a heart, like uh, at least most of us, so I was told, 
And what we can do is we can take, if this is the dude, if this is the dude, if we can take an electrode and place it on his left hand, an electrode and place it on his right hand, and take an electrode and place it on his leg, then at this point, what I would have, this is not really on his leg, but never mind. At this point, what I would have is I can, I can visualize some sort of triangle. I can visualize some sort of triangle. And then I can measure different uh, currents going either from here to here or from here to here maybe. And this is definitely going to be very productive for me if I want to interpret the electroconductivity of the heart. And we're going to do it just now based on the knowledge that we have about the direction of propagation of the action potential in the heart. And we're going to put it all together, and I promise it's going to make a little bit more sense. And we're going to stick to the very essentials. I'm not going to give you anything you don't need for your biophysics course. Let's say we have this needle, and it's measuring, and it's measuring these, the Eindhoven triangle here in general. And it's only measuring the integral vector. So if the integral vector, and again, I'm just going to draw here the directions. And if the integral vector, let's just say, is going in that direction, we're going to have a positive reading. So we're going to have an upstroke. So this, this is going to measure an upstroke. It's going to measure up. It's going to be deflected up. And actually, I'm going to maybe, maybe erase this so we can work with it. If I, have, if I have a positive reading just like so, I will have an upstroke, and I will read an upstroke. Perfect. We're getting close. Very good. So what I want to do, oh no, actually I'm just going to, to do this. What I want to do is I want to see, and I'm just going to erase this so we can work with this as well. I want to see what will I read. So in the beginning, obviously, the reading is going to be uh, nothing because the heart is going to be at rest. It's not going to be depolarized or repolarized at any point. And we know that we have set heartbeats. But in between those heartbeats, the heart could be at rest. It could and it also should. <laughs> and actually, let me move this. Let me move this a little bit, a little bit down so we'd have more space to work with. Very good. Very good. So let's get started. First electrical event. First electrical event. Well, I already know what that is. I know that it's the depolarization, the depolarization of the atriums. And this is the vector that I would get. And if you're not sure what I mean, you can just go up, go up and, and just remember what we had here. Remember what we had here. And I'm going to have a very a small, I'm actually going to draw maybe an even a smaller arrow pointing in that direction. So I'm just going to put it here, a smaller arrow pointing in that direction. Actually, I'm going to even I'm going to even do more than that and copy this this triangle copy this triangle. I'm just going to put a few of these over here so we can measure the different, the different steps. Maybe. There we go. Four is going to be enough. And the first, the first electrical activity I also mentioned, already, already mentioned, this is a direction. And because it's going towards the positive, I'm going to have an upstroke. I'm going to read an upstroke. And it's going to go up slightly. And then it's going to stop. Perfect. What else are we going to have? What else is in store for us? Well, we, or, we already said it's traveling down the bundle of his, and it's going to depolarize the septal tissue here. And it's going to show us something along the lines of this direction. So our triangle is going to read a very small vector in that direction. Not that small, just to make it visible. There we go. Which direction is it, is it showing? Well, it's towards the negative direction. So if it's towards the negative direction, we'll see a deflection, a negative deflection here. And again, a very small negative deflection. Very small negative deflection. Very good. What happens next? Well, next is the very, very uh, dramatic event of the depolarizing, uh, I got to switch colors here, there we go, the depolarization of the ventricles here, the depolarization of the ventricles, maybe a blue color is going to be better, there we go, depolarization of the ventricles, and we already know that the vector for that is going to look somewhere along the lines of this, and it's going to be very big because it's the biggest event, and I'm just going to remind you by looking at this one, it's the biggest event really. It's the biggest event. And just if you're wondering what happens to the, to the AV node here, and it's a good time to explain what happens to the AV node. The AV node here really didn't give us much measurement. And that is why we have some sort of, of distance between this wave and this wave. It's not really going to go up and then down. It's going to have a little bit of a silence point. And this is really what the AV node is giving us. But it's not super important at the moment. So we're going to have a, a, a big... This is our next vector, and it's a very big positive deflection. Very big positive deflection. Very big positive deflection. 
Very good. What happens next? Well, we already mentioned that uh, we're going to depolarize the outskirts or the edges of the ventricles, the edges of the ventricles here and here. Obviously, I'm not using specific terminology. Just keep it simple. And both of them are going to be pointing in that direction. So the integral vector, if I add it up, is going to look like this. Very good. So we're going to, again, have a very small negative deflection, a very small negative deflection, very small negative deflection. Now what happens next? What happens next? Well, we already know that we're going to have the repolarizing going this way, the repolarizing wave going this way, going this way. Very good. And I'm just going to maybe go a little bit to the right here and add this triangle here so we can deal with it. And you're saying, oh, well, you may say, perfect, the direction of the, of the repolarizing vector is in this direction. We have a negative deflection. But I'm going to stop you and say, wait a little while, wait a second. Let's imagine that we have a tissue here, and we have positive charges moving from the left to the right. Then we know we have positive deflection. And if we have positive, if we have charges moving the other way, the other way, maybe we will have negative deflection. But the, uh, the wave of repolarization is not positive charges moving from one side to the other. It's negative charges moving from one side to the other. So instead of having positive charges like so moving from one side to the other, we are going to have negative charges moving from one side to the other. And because negative charges have the opposite polarity as positive charges, instead of having a vector that points in that direction, we're just going to flip it 180 degrees. And just as a reminder, because the repolarizing wave, the repolarizing wave is essentially going that way, and it is in effect a total different polarity because it's negative charges moving across and not positive charges, we're going to just flip it over and we're going to get this this direction for repolarization. And if we're getting this, it's going to be a positive upstroke. And this is really what I'm going what I'm going to measure. So this is a heartbeat. And again it's a very simplified. Very simplified. My my idea was turning this into into this. Maybe we've made it. And let's try and understand. This is the P, Q, R, S, and T. Very good. And just to understand what these mean, because we already do, but I'm going to review it again anyways, because I believe in being redundant. P is the depolarization, deep dip for depolarization of the atria. Atria, plural for atrium. And the QRS is considered a complex. The QRS complex, because it is all basically the depolarization of the ventricles. Depolarization of the ventricles. Ventricles. The Q is the depolarization of the septal tissue in the ventricle. The R is, is the major repolarization event. And then we have the S as the outskirts or the edges, so to speak, of this tissue. All of this is the depolarization of ventricles. Very good. And the T, we already know that this means the re rip for repolarization of the ventricles. And we already mentioned that the depolarization of the atriums, the depolarization of the atriums traveling this direction is somewhere here because we, we know we have the repolarization of the ventricles, so we have to have repolarization of the atriums as well, of the atria. The problem is that it's, it's an event, it's an event that takes place at this time point, at this time point. And being that the QRS complex is such a massive, uh, a massive deflection. It's a very, very big deflection. We're not going to be able, let's just say, we're not going to be able to read a small vector, small vector going in that direction. We're not going to be able to read that. So you can say that the, if I'm asking, where is the repolarization of the atria? It is hidden, hidden in the QRS, in QRS complex. I really hope that I was able to make sense and turn this into this. And in the next video, we're just going to review the bare essentials of electroencephalography. And I'm also going to take a bunch of questions from the department and answer them, a bunch of questions that you may have on your exam. See you there.